Thank you so much for watching this video on Hans Selye's General Adaptation Syndrome. Remember, the best way to study is to take practice tests, and if you can't find good practice tests, build your own and learn while you do it using the Learn My Test study tool. It's absolutely free at LearnMyTest.com. Try a practice test that I made using the Learn My Test study tool by clicking on the link in the description. Joe's boss just told him that if he doesn't pick it up at work, he's going to let him go or fire him. Stage one of Hans Selye's general adaptation syndrome is the alarm stage, where your body is aware of a stressor. For example, in Joe's case, it's him learning that he is at risk to lose his job if he doesn't pick it up at work. Although Joe's life is not in danger, his body is responding as if he has just learned that a bear is roaming close to his tent while he is camping with his girlfriend in the woods. When you see a bear roaming by your campsite who might attack you, you can't activate your parasympathetic nervous system and just relax and let your food digest. You need to activate your sympathetic nervous system, cut off digestion, and get the hell out of that campsite. The only problem is that when your sympathetic nervous system cuts off your digestion, it can cause nausea and stomach cramps. Your heart rate may also increase, and for some people, the alarm stage can lead to headaches. After being aware of the stressor, your body moves into resistance stage, where it releases a hormone called noradrenaline to help you cope with the stress. Joe feels back to normal now. The noradrenaline is helping him get focused on his work and dealing with the problem. In many cases, people in the resistance stage end up not progressing to stage three, which is the exhaustion stage. The exhaustion stage is when all the body's resources, such as noradrenaline, are depleted and the parasympathetic nervous system is now forced to be activated. Instead of feeling fine after Joe's conversation with his boss, let's assume right when Joe gets to his desk after talking to his boss, he opens the door and his desk is full of work. He has way more work than he could ever finish in the time his boss wants him to finish it, and Joe goes back into the alarm stage and then the resistance stage again before he could fully recover from the conversation with his boss. During the exhaustion stage, people may feel very tired like they have little energy to get through the day. The immune system is also weakened, so people in the exhaustion stage may be more prone to getting sick. General adaptation syndrome does bear similar resemblance to common psychological ailments. For example, the alarm stage can be associated with anxiety. The resistance stage is the body and brain coping with life stressors trying to deal with the anxiety in productive and non-productive ways. Everybody may experience the exhaustion stage differently, but the symptoms for some can re resemble major depressive disorder or depression. People may feel tired, like they have little energy, they may have feelings of hopelessness, or just have a general negative outlook on life. Anxiety, which I compared to the alarm stage, is associated with worries, headaches, stomach cramps, gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea and gas, along with increased heart rate. Depression is associated with the exhaustion stage, feeling tired, dietary changes, sleep disturbances, hopelessness, and a 1.5 to 2 times increased risk of heart disease. What do anxiety and depression have in common? They both can be related to the stress response. They also both are associated with a higher risk for heart disease and approximately 50 to 70% of people with an anxiety disorder experience depression in their lifetime. This is much higher than the general population. It should be noted that people with co-occurring anxiety and depressive disorders are at a three times increased risk for heart disease when compared to the general population. So there is a possibility that Joe, after being exposed to all these stressors, may enter the exhaustion stage and end up falling into a depression. Cardiologists Friedman and Rosenman made a hypothesis that people with certain personalities tended to have worse outcomes when it came to heart disease and decided to test it. 
They were able to identify two personality types. Type A personalities are people that respond very strongly to stressors. They act out in anger and express overt aggression to others. On the other hand, type B personalities respond calmly to stressors and appear more relaxed and happy-go-lucky. Friedman and Rosenman discovered that type A personalities were more likely to have adverse cardiovascular events than type B personalities. This suggests that people's personalities, specifically how they respond to stressors, can affect their cardiovascular health. It's not just people's personality and how they individually respond to stress. Some people are just exposed to a lot more stressors than others. Abraham Maslow created a pyramid of our hierarchy of needs, things we need to be happy or fulfilled in life. Maslow argued that whatever need was not fulfilled in that person's life was the focus. People who are dealing with stressors on the bottom of the pyramid are going to find it a lot more difficult to cope with their stress when they are worried about food or safety. I'm sure that even our type B personality, who is cool, calm, and collected all the time, would probably not be so cool, calm, and collected if he did not know where he was sleeping or his next meal was coming from. So Joe actually ended up getting fired from his job, unfortunately. This puts Joe at an increased risk for a heart attack, as people are more likely to have a heart attack after losing their job. Carney found that financial stress is the biggest barrier to successful psychotherapy treatment for individuals with depression who also have heart disease. People who cope positively with stress tend to have a strong social support system. Hopefully Joe will be able to lean on his family for support after getting terminated. Ziegelstein suggests that Exercise is also a positive coping strategy for stress and protective against heart disease. Along with a healthy diet and lots of fruits and vegetables. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Subscribe to stay up to date on our most recent videos. Also, click the link in the description to take a practice test that I made using the Learn My Test study tool.